Did she normally go to bed in such provocative lingerie? See, I know that the whole story you've been selling us is bullshit. Do you want to know how? Three things. Firstly, the very provocative red lingerie. Looks like something somebody might get on Valentine's Day, but if you were out for a walk, why would she be wearing it? <laughs> I mean, I've, I've heard of some people doing some pretty crazy stuff while they're asleep, but getting changed into something like this, that would be a first. Secondly, the murder weapon was left at the scene. The killer used a knife, obviously. Multiple lacerations to the face, back, and legs, seeming to point to exertion of extreme rage. Many of the cuts inflicted post-mortem, meaning that the killer continued to mutilate her after she was dead. Typical of a crime of passion, and here's the kicker, Daniel. Your fingerprints were all over that knife. It's our kitchen knife. Do you not think it's nice? And thirdly, why didn't you go home? We tried to get in contact with you for three whole days. Your phone, your work, your parents, nobody knew where you were. You went off-grid on the night of your fiancé's murder. Does that not sound in the least bit suspicious to you? No comment. What? No comment. Oh, come on, Daniel! Rich, 